That is good to be with you, having served on the committee for six years and um, loved serving on VA, but uh, got called elsewhere, if you will. But it's, it's good to be back. Um, so let me thank you, first of all, for holding this, this member day hearing. Uh, as I've often said, caring for our veterans is one of Congress's most <clears throat> sacred duties. And uh, as I said, I'm extremely proud to have served on this committee for quite some time and to be a veteran myself. And uh, though I longer, no longer serve on the committee, I, I really never stop serving America's veterans, and that's what brings me here today. So I'm extremely proud of the work that Congress, and particularly this committee, has done to ensure better health care for our veterans. You know, last year we passed the VA Mission Act, which we've been working on for several years, and to create a health care system that truly puts veterans first by giving them more choice in their health care treatments. The health of our veterans is one of my highest priorities. As a physician, you can imagine that that would be the case. And today I'm here to advocate for another bill which will improve veterans' health care. Representative Kathleen Rice and I have introduced H.R. 3700, which will prohibit smoking in all Veterans Health Administration facilities and repeal the antiquated 1992 law that requires the VHA to furnish and maintain designated indoor or outdoor smoking areas. As an Army Reserve doctor, I know that permitting or exposing patients to firsthand and secondhand smoke is dangerous, especially while they undergo treatment at VHA facilities. It's past time that Congress address this issue that it created in 1992 and fix the outdated law so that we do not continue to harm veterans seeking care at VHA facilities. Let's get us in step with the rest of the country and, and do what's right. According to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, smoking is the leading cause of preventable death in the United States, killing more than 480,000 people annually. And there's no risk-free level of exposure to secondhand smoke. As such, the overwhelming majority of America's private health care systems and facilities, most Department of Defense medical facilities, and all federal government buildings are smoke-free. Yet there are nearly 1,000 designated indoor or outdoor smoking spaces at VHA facilities across the country. That's at least one in every state. In addition to the health concerns, such spaces are difficult to maintain and cost the VA more than $1.2 million annually. That's why I was pleased to see VA Secretary Robert Wilkie announce this June that beginning in October, all VHA facilities will be smoke-free. However, it's since come to my attention that this policy change has been challenged by the American Federation of Government Employees, who argue that the smoke-free policy should not apply to VA employees. I believe this is a perfect illustration of precisely why Congress needs to assert its authority and make clear once and for all that smoking is unacceptable in the medical facilities where our veterans seek care every day. H.R. 3700 would do exactly that, ensuring that no one can change, reinterpret, or strike down the smoke-free policy. The VA strongly supports codifying the smoke-free policy, as do two dozen public health organizations such as the American Cancer Society Action Network, the American Lung Association, the American Heart Association, the Campaign for Tobacco-Free Kids, and the Society of Thoracic Surgeons. I would also like to thank the members of this committee who have co-sponsored H.R. 3700, Representatives Greg Stubbe and Chris Pappas for their support of this bill. So I ask the, uh, the committee, uh, I urge you to consider H.R. 3700 at a future health subcommittee legislation hearing. This is important legislation which will build on the committee's work to improve veterans' health care. And I want to thank you for your consideration. And with that, I yield back. Well, thank you, Mr. Restrup. I'd like to recognize Dr. Dunn. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Wenstrup, uh, I want to thank you for a common sense bill. Uh, it's amazing that we have to do that sometimes, but uh, you know that's exactly what we're here for. And uh, I couldn't agree with you more, and I appreciate your efforts on behalf of all of the veterans. Thank you. How you back? Well, thank you, Doctor. I know you've uh, had the experience of seeing in the negative effects of smoking long term. And whether it's firsthand or secondhand, I think we need to do all that we can to protect our, our veterans uh, seeking better health. Yes, and as we know, uh, in our country, tobacco-related uh, illnesses are a leading cause of death, right? And so this is a good way to try to save some lives and prevent disease. And I believe you're a nurse, if yes, I'm not mistaken, yes, so you understand this Absolutely. very well, too. Thanks yeah. for your bill. Thanks you bet. For Thank in. you. Appreciate it.